very good performance. Yeah. Um, I think I'd like to center our discussion a little bit um, around the contrast that this introduction sets up with the main part of the movement. And there is this, I think there is a rhythmic ebullience about the Allegro and, and this, like a dazzling C majorness about it. You know what I mean? That, that I think we can better capture. Um, and then there's, and then I think we need to have a discussion about um, this rhythmic motive that, that starts the movement, that keeps coming back in many ways. And, and Jasmine and I were having a discussion backstage, and, and it's, it's hard to talk about because it comes back in, uh, so in many so characters. many different guises, uh, in so many different characters. But what's, um, what's for sure is that the, the movement, I think, really, really revolves around that motive. Um, but first, the opening. Um, I'm curious to know how you would describe um, what you're going for in the first chord. Um, largely, or the imagery we've been current or most recently thinking about a uh, really calm lake. Um, it's uh -huh. winter time, the snow, everything is still around. Mm -hmm. The lake is calm, but underneath there's ripples of movement that reaches the surface at times. But like the beginning, of course, is a big ripple, and then it's still again. And then still, and then the next forte, another ripple. Mm -hmm. It's very it's specific. Very, very evocative. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah very evocative. Um, I'm, I'm, yeah, I, I, I don't want to trample on that at all. Um, and I'm curious to know, Jasmine, what you think too, but I, I, I feel like there is a, um, a shockingness about the first chord that's missing a little bit. And even the second chord, um, the second chord, you know, it's marked pianissimo, but it's, it's a misspelled augmented sixth chord, and, and, and which is you know, really one of the tensest chords that exists. And, and it felt like maybe the placidness of your imagery is taking over a little bit, or is, is kind of overriding some of the natural um, qualities of these chords a little bit? Yeah, I just want to um, reinforce what Wayne just said about the shockingness of the first chord. If you think about every string quartet and many other pieces that Beethoven has written up till the, to this point, how do they start, right? They usually start on the tonic, right? Or, or, or dominant and very shortly thereafter the tonic, right? So my god, like if you start with this, <laughs> I mean, like, there's so much drama in there, yeah, that we don't want, uh, I would say, too much of a nice touch when we approach a string. It's a little bit too, you know, a little bit too nice. It, we want, yeah, the shock of it to, to strike us. So it's not a sforzando or anything, right? We want to we wanna just do a forte, but can you guys just try the first chord and, and make the beginning of it yeah, a little bit more, have a little more teeth in articulation, even though it's not sforzando. <laughs> Slightly vanilla. <laughs> okay. So, sorry. So, what did Wayne mean when he said this is actually an augmented sixth chord? Like the harmony. Yeah. So, what what note would be different if it were written as an augmented sixth? Which it's right now F, da, 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 right? F, A, C, E flat, right? So if it were an augmented six chord, which note would be spelled differently? The, the E flat, right? And, and what would it be? It would be a D sharp. D -sharp. Yeah, exactly. And, 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 and so what is that, what would, how would that make that chord change in, in feeling? Mm -hmm. Very, right? Can you, so can, can, can you all imagine that E flat as a D sharp and, and, and what that, how much ten, more, t more tense 
it makes that chord. Can we, can we try? I think, I think there are two, two components um, here that, that will help. One is figure out where the, um, the very dissonant intervals are within this chord. So certainly the augmented sixth, right? right? Between the F and the D sharp, but also between the, the D sharp and, uh, let's see, there's a tritone, right, with the, with the A. Yeah. Yeah. So she has the E flat. I mean, you're the who has the D flat? Sorry, uh, the, the D. The she, she has E flat. So that E yes, flat. It, yeah. And so the the quote unquote D sharp is here, and then right. the tritone that you're. Yeah. yeah. I think. I mean, I think he he might have written the, the composers did this often, re, um, misspelled it for out of convenience, right? Or maybe I don't know. Maybe that's not true. Maybe you don't know yet. It's ambiguous. Is exactly. It's ambiguous. Yeah. But. Um, so, so one component of this is feel that um, E flat rubbing with all of these other chords. It interacts with each of the other notes in a very dissonant way. And also in the release. If it were a dominant seventh chord, then maybe it would have a certain, not, still not easy release, but um, with an augmented sixth chord, you definitely want to sus sustain it to the end in this very, very tense way. I felt something. My spine was beginning to tingle. That's good. Um, right here, what chord do we expect here in bar measure eight? Obviously, this is another big shock, right? So, so what is, so we don't expect it. So what, what do we expect? Here. What are you leading to again? So you want to just play the quarter before that? The, the third beat of measure seven, just play that. Just as if, just as if you don't know what's going to be next. What, what do we expect? Which is? Yes, yeah, yeah. So then, if if you pretend that you're gonna go there, right? You you don't you have no idea it's not gonna go there. Really, you have no idea. Um, if you, if you had never heard this piece before, so can we try? Um, and then what is that? How much does that add to the shock of the next chord? Yeah. Yeah, you want to start from measure five? Let me just, just I, sorry, okay. say just one thing about measure three. It's, it's a lot, uh, yeah, it's getting there. Maybe when you have a chance to rehearse it, um, play with just a little bit more sound. It, right now it feels um, very minimal, like everyone is playing as soft as possible, and that's hard to make work. The other day we were, when we were getting ready for um, Bar Talk 4, or last week as we were rehearsing leading up to it, Jasmine started saying, let's play this 87% instead of 100%. And that got me thinking. Actually, if you play 97% or 98%, that's a lot more specific than 100%, where you're just kind of giving it all, right? But 98% is something very specific. So here, instead of playing 100% um, the softest that you can, I would say maybe 87%. And that'll give you a little bit more control. And same with actually um, everything after this. The pianissimo, think of it a little bit more as not um, minimal, not just like as soft as you can, but a range and also just a little bit more than as soft as you can. Yeah, start from the beginning.
So just to, just to go along with my idea for a sec, the places where you definitely don't want to play 0% or 100% or whatever, whatever, whatever it is um, are on any chords that aren't resolutions. That would be all of them here, actually. <laughs> so, so, you, so imagine like, you know, playing. Actually, can you guys just play like a C major chord? Just imagine that this resolves for a second in pianissimo. Great. So everything that you play, I think, in the introduction could be more than that and could be more tense than that. So like, for instance, on that last, um, second to last dominant, uh, sorry, diminished seventh chord in 22 that you guys are playing, just a little bit more sound, like there should be a little bit of tug in your bow, right? And a, a little bit more weight than, than whatever chord that, that would resolve to. So it still felt, basically, um, everything still felt kind of minimal to me, and that was, that was um, taking away from the effect that you guys were going for. Yeah, and what, what Wayne is talking about with the tenseness of the suspensions, um, I, I think you guys can feel, allow that tense quality to, to make you uncomfortable before you resolve. Like, feel what that does to you. Like, if you play the chord at, could you play, just play, um, sorry, 12? Just play what, what you have on the downbeat of 12. And just hold it. Don't, don't go to the next note. Just, just play that. Uh, so, uh, yes, 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 yes. Now go to your G. OK? So, so and, then, and then can you play 11, 12, 13, 14? And then next bar. See how I'm, yeah, I'm so uncomfortable, right? I, I'm like dying here, right? So, so feel that, don't, don't just, um, I mean, you're already doing, doing a little bit of it, but even more so, don't just know that you're gonna resolve on the next downbeat or resolve on the, right? So, so allow that un discomfort to, to take a hold of you before you resolve. One more thing that um, could help with this section, if you look at a score, or maybe in your parts even, um, from measure 10 to uh, the next rest is a very long stretch of just notes, right? No um, rests or clear markers, perhaps. Um, and I think the effect that comes out is just, you know, like, this, like all this fog and, and, and uh, doubt and uncertainty. But I think internally you guys have to have a few markers. Um, and one, one of them that I see is um, the first, in the first violin part, certainly, I think you're reaching higher and higher. You rest, you come to, you plateau on a, a B flat, right? Yeah. And, then, and then C natural, and then D natural after a, a, a small detour. So I, I would think about how you would divide these up, um, these uh, gestures up in, in the introduction. It's a little bit clear at the beginning, right? You've got two measures, you've got two measures, and then a three, and then a two. So maybe see like if you can divide up this long, apparently run-on sentence from 10 to 23 um, into two or three bar groups a little bit in your mind. I'm gonna try from 10. Um, 
harmonically, where does this finally go from the beginning? Where does, it, where does this harmonic progression end? This, this fantastic and weird and incredible harmonic progression, where does it end? At C major. Which is where? Allegro Marching. But Wait. Where, 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 where do we have our final C major chord? That, that's gonna that's gonna finally put all of this struggle and what yeah that's where we we triumph over all this stuff <laughs> that's like yeah so so this is still you know this is you're finally seeing the light here right but you still gotta um, think yeah that we're, we're finally reaching you know the dominant of C but we're still gonna um, I, basically, what I'm trying to say is that I think the pause is a little bit too long. Um, Wayne, what do you think? I agree. Yeah. Um, Did you yes. Need in the run through, even, or just this time? In the run in through, the run through too. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and and that chord, that it's finally, you know, we've got a dominant seventh chord, or you know, we finally have something that leads somewhere. All these seventh chords, diminished seventh chords, augmented sixth chords. The, the thing about those is that it's you could go in so many different directions harmonically. So you finally have one, and I, I know you know this, but I think you've got a, the sound on it. it. needs to be a clearer five kind of a sound. So you're in pianissimo, and you need to resolve from this A flat to this G, but once you get a five, you know, you've played five ones, you know, you know, you know how it goes at the end. Five, one. And I think in, in the same way you can do five, as if you were going to, to one. It's like you see the light at the end yeah, of it, right? Exactly. It's like finally there's, you, there's this door and you see that right. freedom is on the other yeah. side. Yeah. So we only have a few, like four minutes or so, okay. but um, maybe we can talk a little bit about this. Um, yum, bum, to me, you know, I mean, there's, there's sort of like a range of um, how, how much hesitance you want at the beginning, but I, it, it needed a little bit more rhythm, rhythmic quality, like yum, bum. Um, it, it was too hesitant, I thought, at, at the beginning. So could you just try right on it? Can you try just um, a little bit more directly into the downbeat ones? What do you think? I like it. You can uh, keep going a little yeah, okay. yeah, keep going a little bit. Okay, now this one, this one really builds confidence, right? It's, this one's forte and, and the first one is piano. So I think in terms of articulation, it also needs um, a much crisper attack. Yeah. And, and also, I mean, just along the lines of the harmonic progression, you, you, he could have just arrived at the C major chord right here. Right? But, right? No, it's not over yet. You've still got this D minor chord to, to fight before we, yeah. So, yeah, I think it can just be more, more bold. And, yeah. yeah. I, I think because this sets up so much of the movement, I think that the, the directness of the rhythm um, will be helpful. And I think you can convey any, um, any vestige of doubt because it's not, it hasn't reached a tonic yet in, the, in the, um, the amount that you sustain the long note. So boom, boom, but very, very rhythmic in the beginnings of the notes. Does that make sense? Yeah, can I just mention one more thing? Because sure. since we're almost out of time, um, the rhythmic integrity that Wayne is talking about, um, j just make sure that as you guys go through the movement that you really notice each little cell or, or motive um, that he's building the piece on, like, uh, and, and maintain the rhythmic quality of it throughout the piece. Like, for example, um, you've got bum, bum, right? And you've got ba da dum bum, bum, or, and you've got, um, Ba da da dum bum bum. So those two eighth short eighth notes at the end, it's it's almost like a bum bum bum. Ba da da dum bum bum. That's a rhythmic motif. Or or 
but it's a bum bum, right? So make sure that later on um, when you play, D, um, and then you've got this the the, the more flowing sixteenth notes. That's another thing that he develops, right? So when he sometimes put those two things together. Um, like here, um, those are those two things put together. Sometimes I feel those two eighth notes, um, yeah, don't recall the rhythmic essence of that motive. Anyway, yeah. And and your arrival, if finally you have an arrival at 43, that's what Jasmine was talking about earlier, right? I think could be so much more exuberant. I think that's why these Sforzandi are there. Which, by the way, I didn't, I didn't hear very much. It, it sounded yeah. an awful lot like the next phrase um, or the next statement two measures later. Basically, so. have fun. Because what do you do when you have fun? You wouldn't accent one and three. You would accent two and four, right? <laughs> like <laughs> two, three, four. <laughs> yeah, so. I think we're out of time, but thank you. It's yeah, great job, great. Okay. Thank you.